two persons of interest in Portmore violence surrendered to police. Two of the eight men named as persons of interest for questioning by the St. Catherine South Police in relation to ongoing violence in sections of Portmore have turned themselves in. Boy Boy and Chad surrendered to cops at the Portmore Police Station on Monday. Head of the Police Division, Superintendent Hopton Nicholson, said the men will be interviewed by detectives. The division had issued a request for several men to report to the Portmore Criminal Investigation Branch for questioning in connection with a series of violent incidents in the communities of Gregory Park and Banga Gully. The incidents under investigation include a string of crimes such as murder, shooting, and arson. In the latest incident on Sunday, August 6, a man and a woman were shot in the Watson Grove community. The man was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital while the woman was admitted. This incident followed a fiery attack in Gregory Park which left several persons homeless. The police say they will intensify operations within the space to curtail illegal activities. A high-powered rifle found in St. James. Another high-powered weapon is off the streets of Montego Bay, St. James, with the seizure of an SLR rifle and a magazine containing four live rounds. The fine was made during a police military operation conducted in the Irwin community this morning. The gun was found in a highly vegetated area, the superintendent in charge of operations for St. James, Iran Samuels, told Irie News Media TV. This comes as a part of a series of operations across Area 1 and St. James to disarm and arrest criminals, he shared. 33-year-old Omar Fourth of Port Maria, St. Mary was arrested and charged following the stabbing death of his father at their home on Saturday, August 5th. Reports from the Port Maria police are that at about 3 a.m., Fourth and his father, 74-year-old Clovis Fourth, had an argument during which he reportedly used a knife to inflict several wounds on him. The police were alerted and upon arrival, Clovis was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. An investigation was launched and Fourth was charged with murder on Sunday, August 6, following a caution statement. His court date is being finalized. Women account for 97% of visits to clinics for family planning in 2022. Some 97% of visits to health clinics for family planning services in 2022 were done by women, according to new government data which raises more questions about how Jamaica will confront poor health-seeking behaviors by men. The information is contained in the 2022 Economic and Social Survey Jamaica, ESSJ, which was released last month by the Planning Institute of Jamaica. The data revealed that 146,050 visits were made to clinics in 2022, a 16% decrease compared with the corresponding period in 2021. The total number of visits by females to health facilities for the period was 142,064 and for males, 3,986. Female and male visits fell by 16% and 36% compared with 2021. The parishes of Kingston and St. Andrew, 25,215, followed by St. James, 11,049, reported the highest number of visits for both females and males. Portland reported the least number of female clients for the period at 4,607, an 11% increase compared with 2021. Data also showed that in Portland, no men accessed family planning clinics during the year, compared with 136 in 2021. Lawyer wants murder charges against student in Guyana school fire withdrawn. Georgetown, Guyana, CMC a lawyer representing a 15-year-old student charged with several counts of murder arising from the deadly May 22 fire that killed 19 students at a dormitory at the Madia Secondary School in Guyana is calling for the charges to be withdrawn. In a letter to the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, Attorney Dr. Dexter Todd said that based on the disclosures made at the Madia Magistrates Court during the hearings, it is clear that there is no potential evidence to support the charges against the teenager. Upon review of all the statements and other exhibits served on our clients, our suspicions in this matter were confirmed, there is absolutely no potential evidence that could support a charge of murder, much less secure a conviction against our client, Todd wrote in his letter. The attorney said given the evidence before the court, he is urging the DPP to review the file and have the charges withdrawn, warning that failure to do that would result in civil action against the state. Please note that should this charge not be withdrawn against our client and it goes the full length, we will be forced to institute civil and constitutional proceedings against the office of the DPP in the state, seeking certain order, declaration, and substantial damages. The 15-year-old schoolgirl, who is being held at the juvenile holding center, is accused of setting fire to the dormitory resulting in the deaths of 19 fellow students between the ages of 12 to 17 and a 5-year-old boy. She was not required to enter a plea. Full disclosure in the matter was completed on July 20 and Todd said the evidence before the court is circumstantial and very weak, and does not meet the requirements for murder charges. 
he said some of the witnesses in the matter have claimed that his client was upset with the caretaker of the dorm for taking away her cell phone and threatened to burn the place down. However, the attorney said besides the words of a teenager, there is nothing else linking his client to the deadly blaze, and that one of the witnesses told the court that the accused after allegedly issuing the threat said it was a joke. We certainly cannot get into the mind of our client to know what she meant nor if it was a joke and neither can the court, he said, telling the DPP that none of the witnesses placed the accused in the area where the fire started. None of them stated that they saw her light the fire, none of them stated that she accepted responsibility for the fire, none of them said they saw her walking or running from the area where the fire allegedly started prior to the great blaze. There is no forensic evidence in any form that incriminates our client, he said. He said the court only claimed by some witnesses that the accused had threatened to burn the dorm down and that she had collected a lighter and perfume from two students. The only thing before us is an alleged statement by the accused, a statement that could have been capitalized on by any person who heard it. Note that some witnesses also confirmed that other students from the dorm were engaged in smoking marijuana that very day, Todd told the DPP. On Monday, President Earl Fon Ali told reporters that members of the Commission of Inquiry into the tragic fire should be sworn in before the end of this week. Ali had in June announced the appointment of retired Major General Joseph Singh to head the inquiry. COVID-19 hospitalizations in the U.S. are on the rise again. Here we go again. COVID-19 hospital admissions have inched upward in the United States since early July in a small-scale echo of the three previous summers. With an updated vaccine still months away, this summer bump in new hospitalizations might be concerning, but the number of patients is far lower than before. A look at what we know. For the week ending July 29th, COVID-19 hospital admissions were at 9,056. That's an increase of about 12% from the previous week. But it's a far cry from past peaks, like the 44,000 weekly hospital admissions in early January, the nearly 45,000 in late July 2022, or the 150,000 admissions during the Omicron surge of January 2022. For the week ending July 29th, COVID-19 hospital admissions were at 9,056. That's an increase of about 12% from the previous week. But it's a far cry from past peaks, like the 44,000 weekly hospital admissions in early January, the nearly 45,000 in late July 2022, or the 150,000 admissions during the Omicron surge of January 2022. Since early June, about 500 to 600 people have died each week. The number of deaths appears to be stable this summer, although past increases in deaths have lagged behind hospitalizations.